Hello everyone, welcome to the Dill Pickle Movie Network. I am Dylan Randazzo and here is my review of Jurassic World Dominion, the newest Jurassic franchise installment, also supposedly the last hopefully the last and I put the review in air quotes because this is going to be more of a rant than a review. Now, Colin Trevorrow is back. He is directing this time like he directed Jurassic World in 2015. He's back in the director's chair after taking a break but he has written all three of these films so he's been in kind of total control of this newer trilogy of Jurassic films um, and you know Colin Trevorrow is interesting because he's made some films that people really like. He's made some films that people really hate. Uh, he was gonna make a film that maybe people would have loved with Star Wars. He got fired on that project replaced by J.J. Abrams who gave a movie that a lot of people hated. I think that's an interesting starting point because you have to look at the root of the problem. I was going to give an explanation of the plot uh, but if you are coming to this review to ask you know what are they going to do with the dinosaurs this time I'll tell you they don't do much. The dinosaurs themselves are very very much secondary in this story which is just blasphemy considering that this is a Jurassic World movie. You could just make a dinosaur chasing a bunch of people and it would probably be a pretty entertaining movie you know that's kind of what people want to see that's kind of only what people want to see yes it's very nice if there's a rich engaging story on top of that but if it's just dinosaurs chomping away at people that's still enough but this movie doesn't have that this movie is about bugs it's about locusts yes you heard me locusts giant locusts at that but not dinosaur sized locusts they actually have really nothing to do with the dinosaurs there's an extinct species of locusts that has just reappeared and is just starting to threaten the world's crop and food supply because you know when i sat down with my popcorn i just wanted to watch a two and a half hour movie about crops yay how exciting this movie is essentially about this group of scientists trying to get uh Maisie lockwood who was the young girl we met in the last jurassic world movie to use her dna to try to figure out how to cure this infestation of locusts. So you ask, well, where do the dinosaurs come in? And, and you know what? That's a good, that's a good question. The raptor from the past few movies had a baby, so there is a baby dinosaur. They basically want to capture this dinosaur to help assist in this process, even though when we kind of like sit down and figure out what's going on with the DNA, the raptor really doesn't make much of an impact. They really don't need the raptor. It's more of a, in case we need other information, we'll use this raptor. So the raptor is totally thrown in there as an extra element, but really this is about locusts and this young girl with this really special DNA thing. There are no dinosaurs in this main plot summary. Yes, we bring in some of the old characters, but those old characters aren't necessarily there to do anything specific with dinosaurs. They're actually there to go look at the locusts. This is crazy. This is a Jurassic World movie that is about locusts. If you can com make a compelling story that does tie into the dinosaurs and makes it something impactful, great. I'd love to be surprised in that way. But the locusts really have nothing to do with the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are all around. There are a lot of dinosaurs. They have no sort of relevancy to the plot. And that was just unfathomable to me. You know, the first Jurassic World movie, yes, it was a bit of a retread of the first. It was just a dinosaur on the loose and everyone trying to hide from it. But that was the basic premise and it was entertaining and I enjoyed it. Uh, some people didn't. It was a bit of the legacy sequelness of, you know, why are we just retreading the same beats as the past? I get that. But it was an entertaining story because it retreaded beats from the first movie, which was an entertaining story as is. The second movie I didn't like because of the writing, but I do think there were some interesting ideas and it was ultimately still about the dinosaurs. Here... It's not about the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs could be completely left out of the movie and you'd have the same movie. And I think that is just so, so puzzling. If you have a bunch of people sitting down to write a script about a story that really doesn't involve dinosaurs for a dinosaur franchise that you're claiming the last movie of the franchise where you're going to bring all the characters from this new franchise and the old trilogy back together for this one big giant epic. You ended the last film, these dinosaurs finally living amongst humans on Earth. What an amazing premise. And then you sent them back to a sanctuary where all these dinosaurs are enclosed. So once again, we're going back inside some sort of park. It's not a park. It's more of a sanctuary uh, faci research facility. But still, it is still a closed-in gate. So already we're abandoning the premise that was set up so beautifully in the last one. The last one, the big strength I gave it was that it ended in such an interesting place to now take this story forward. And then they're setting it back within the walls of a confined space. And they're focusing the story on cropping agriculture and locusts. If I want to watch a movie about locusts, call it Locust World. Because there are going to be people who are like, yes, I want to see a movie about farming, about locusts. Let's go see this movie, Locust World. But I wanted to see dinosaurs. And I know audiences are picky. Audiences have expectations. And sometimes audiences' expectations are a little far-fetched to where you kind of have to sit back and say, hey, this is the way they're going. This is the direction they're going in. It's not what you wanted. It's not what you expected. And you can feel negatively toward it, but this is the direction they chose. Here, if the movie is called Jurassic World, there's an expectation for dinosaurs that actually have a 
uh, a reason to be in the story where the action is fun to watch and not jarring and, and so scattershot. I mean, this movie is shot very, very poorly. I think some of the lighting in a lot of sections is really hard to like make out certain characters and certain things, just a little foggy, a little uh, dark and, and just unpleasant to watch. And then the action sequences, a lot of them are so choppy back and forth, back and forth. It's like the Bourne ultimatum on steroids. It's just chop, 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 chop. It's really, really jarring to the eye to where I can't even enjoy the moments where they're just having dinosaurs chase people because they're so short lived, but they're also so terribly shot that it's so hard to watch. And I know a lot of people put effort into these movies. And like I said, the beginning i think a lot of it stems from colin trevorrow's story his direction and just his overall view of this franchise and where he wanted to take this story but that makes me wonder maybe just maybe i can forgive this film if making it terrible was the goal because hear me out colin trevorrow has had a tough time he was slated to do star wars he was fired from star wars he's probably a little bit mad at the whole like hollywood blockbuster thing so maybe he was taking out his anger here and saying you know what they want a Jurassic World movie. They want a movie about dinosaurs. F I'm going to make a movie that is so not that and so just boring and uninteresting and kind of convoluted where there are seven other subplots going on with different characters that really don't meet up until the very end. But even at the time they meet up at the end, they're just kind of redoing the same things they did in the original movie. That's right. Jeff Goldblum literally does the same exact motions that he did in the original. When you bring characters back you're not bringing them back to do the same thing they did before. You're do bringing them back to progress the story. That's why a lot of people like Force Awakens. It was a different Han Solo and Leia than we had seen before. That's why people love Last Jedi. Some people hate Last Jedi, but a lot of people love Last Jedi because Luke was a different, changed character. We got to live with this newer version of a character we love. This movie, yeah, the characters have changed a little bit. They're older, uh, but at their core, they're doing the same exact things, including word for word line readings and beat for beat motions with their arms. It was so puzzling and I'm wondering, did Colin Trevorrow try to make this the most unappealing, unfathomable blockbuster because he's angry about what happened with Star Wars and kind of what happened with this franchise. Maybe he was taking all the bent up anger of having to follow this studio system and the modern way of blockbusters and legacy sequel ABC. This is the outline of a legacy sequel. There's less and less creative freedom seen in a lot of these big corporate blockbusters. Maybe Colin Trevorrow knew that, noticed it, and this was his retaliation. Maybe this should have been called Jurassic World Retaliation because I really do think to be actively this incoherent uh, compared to the other films that came before it and just the nature of the franchise and the story within this own movie itself, I'm really wondering if Colin Trevorrow himself, this is his grand master plan. And honestly, if it is, props to him because it worked. He made something that not only the fans didn't like, the critics didn't like, the actors probably didn't like. They don't really look like they're having a great time here. Jeff Goldblum makes the most of it. And honestly, I give it probably a full star rather than half a star because Jeff Goldblum is paying off hospital bills for carrying the whole movie on his back. You made a promise to a dinosaur. But really, I don't think the actors are enjoying it. I don't think anyone involved is really enjoying their time here. It's a lifeless production. It is the epitome of what the wrong type of Hollywood blockbusters being made today should be. And maybe, just maybe, if that was his intention, Colin Trevorrow's, then honestly, it's kind of genius. But I'm not gonna give him that credit because it is unwatchable, it is hard to watch, it is not a pleasant watch, and I don't recommend it. I think it's gonna be something that really turns people off, especially if you're fans of the franchise. I mean, there are dinosaurs in it, but do they have any relevancy to the story? No, because this story is about locusts, about DNA, about a young girl who is very, very talented, the actress is really good, but again, <sighs> All you have to do is make a story that has a very consistent beginning, middle, and end. Put a dinosaur in it, make the dinosaur the big, evil, monster, scary, scary, chompy, chompy, and we have a movie. Maybe not a great movie, but at least an entertaining movie. Then you can add other layers on top of that. Here, it felt like they had a story, they added some dinosaurs in at the end, and then they ended it in a great spot where they kind of ended the last few films where it's like, okay, dinosaurs and the real world, what's that gonna be like? But still, we will never find out because this is supposed to be the conclusion. And, you know, maybe I spoiled it for you, but I hope you don't see this movie. I hope if you're watching this review, you've already seen it. And if you haven't seen it, you're not going to see it after this review anyway. So I'm sorry if I just spoiled the ending, but it kind of ends where it started. It really doesn't change much. I mean, yes, this locust problem is probably under wraps, but the actual premise of dinosaurs living amongst humans, where was that movie? Where was that movie? That movie would have been so good and I'm hoping someone maybe tries to make that movie. Maybe not in this franchise, but maybe just makes a movie where a guy's walking down the street to get a coffee and sees a pterodactyl fly through the, the sky. You know, cause that would be so fun. Like, 
There was so much promise. The last movie was not good, but it set up so much good to come. And this movie just doesn't have it. And that is coming from a huge fan. I am a huge fan of this franchise, so I really just wanted uh, this to be better than it was. And we gotta talk about Campbell Scott. Campbell Scott is playing this doctor, and I'm sorry, but all his line deliveries, they have this weird, you know, almost marking it energy. If you're not someone who's in like the music business, marking it is basically when you kind of hold back because you don't want to give it your all uh, in practice, in rehearsal. Uh, a lot of singers do it when they don't want to go sing all out. They want to save their voice for the big concert. They'll mark it at a rehearsal or at a sound check. That's what this performance kind of feels like. It's kind of like every line he comes on, he says something and then he just kind of marks it. Like all his lines, they just kind of end like and it's a little weird. It's just so weird for like this big bad villain in this movie. You know, you expect someone who's gonna have a lot of gravitas and really like command the stage or the sound stage or whatever, this, the camera, sorry, I'm in theater mode. I, I just, I didn't understand it. Some of the performances in this just feel like they're marking it. You know, it just feels very robotic. Like we're reading this thing about locusts on a screen and we're reading it to the camera. There's really no enthusiasm. And sure, the original actors and some of the new actors, Chris Pratt, you know, they're trying their best to give this dialogue some life but the ones who obviously aren't some of our mainstays in this franchise some of the newer faces they seem just so completely bored by this and it honestly helps us feel bored in it uh, again maybe Colin Trevorrow wanted that maybe his intention was to cast people who could deliver these lines as boringly as possible and yes these are great actors I'm not slighting the actors because the actors are only given what they're given and they have to make the best of it and some actors like Jeff Goldblum do some actors don't uh, but it's not really on them because the script is that bad. So I don't blame them. And honestly, I don't know if I even blame Colin Trevorrow. I don't know how much of this was studio mandated or not, but if this was some sort of F you to the studio system uh, for what he has endured with these Jurassic movies and the critic responses to those with the Star Wars firing and rehiring of J.J. Abrams or whatever, if this is his plan, uh, it worked because I am uh, frustrated. I have a headache. Um, and that's where I'm going to end this review. Thank you so much for watching. If you go see the movie, hopefully you like it more than me. Hopefully you find other things to like. And if you love locusts, go check this out because there's a whole lot of them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.